Today's video is a follow-up from a couple of weeks ago when I posted this video, should I get into Age of Sigmar? And I just wanna thank everyone who did respond because it really did help me out a lot to make my decision to not really get into Age of Sigmar. But before we get into that video, I just wanna share what the GGGG is for this month. Every month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive a gratitude gift. And for this month, July of 2021, we have the printable scenery, uh, Hagglethorn Hollow uh, Kickstarter, which is this small cottage, which is painted up. I'm gonna be mailing that out to one of my Patreon supporters, as well as these Hab units from Corvus 3D Printables, and you can use that for any sci-fi game. It's this whole set needed to create some space and was running out of space, so I'm uh, giving that away as well. Final gratitude gift is most likely gonna be the Drunagor Kickstarter, second Kickstarter that they are coming out with one of their pledges. Click on my Patreon link in the descriptions below to go to my Patreon page to get in on that. So again, I just wanted to thank all of the people who responded to my previous video. As you can see here, I had over 100 comments. I read all of them and <laughs> I should have known that people have super strong feelings about Games Workshop and shouldn't have been surprised by that. Especially helpful to me were folks who already were playing Age of Sigmar or have played Age of Sigmar. And I think a lot of the reasons that I had in terms of my original list was true for why uh, my for and against list, which uh, was my original one that is shown here. And a lot of you did emphasize that the cost commitment to playing uh, Age of Sigmar and Games Workshop is quite steep because it's going to cost a couple hundred dollars. Now, people did make a lot of really helpful suggestions. First of all, a number of you said, uh, go ahead and play Warcry instead, which I love Warcry. I have played Warcry and um, I created a bunch of actually quick painting tutorials on Warcry. So if you want to see that, just click on my playlist above as well as my video on how to play. But this was really considering getting into mass army battles, which I've never done. I've only done small skirmish games up to this point. And also a lot of you said that you can mitigate some of your cost by not purchasing the books. You don't really have to do that and just use online resources as well as using free versions of uh, like Battlescribe or things like that, as well as making sure that I'm really strategic in the miniature purchases that I make. Also, a couple of you did mention to use uh, proxy miniatures, 3D printable miniatures, and I am actually creating most of my Seraphon army out of one page rules, 3D miniatures. Here is an example. This is the Carnosaur version from One Page Rules, which I think looks awesome. So though there are definitely ways to save money, but I think the cost of continually updating of the rule set changing every couple of years, uh, things being modified. Many of you said that it nullifies your strategy or your armies every time they make an update. And so that was pretty convincing as well. So the time and cost sink to sort of continually updating and upgrading your army was pretty compelling for me in terms of why I wasn't gonna get into Age of Sigmar. But there is actually two other reasons that have come up since I posted this original video for why I ended up choosing not to get the Dominion starter box set. And I think you're gonna be surprised by my first reason for why I decided not to get the box set. And to be clear, I am still gonna try out uh, playing Age of Sigmar, but I'm not investing any more money than I already have, which so far I've only spent the $80, $85 for the starter set for the Seraphon because I wanted to compare that to one page rules, uh, 3D printable miniatures. So that's my uh, money investment that I've made so far, but my intention from this point on is not to spend any more money for playing Age of Sigmar, but I am actually going to play uh, with some local folks who wanted to play with me as well as my brother in the future. So I'm not completely cutting out Age of Sigmar. It's just that I'm committing to not investing any more money uh, into the system. So the first additional reason for why I decided not to get into Age of Sigmar is actually might be surprising, especially since I'm a hobbyist. And that is I saw a video of all of the future releases for the Cruel Boys that are coming out. Now I did say, you know, the 
the orcs in Dominion were the primary reason why I would get that box set because I really like playing orcs uh, and I just thought those models looked really good. And that was why I was seriously considering buying Dominion. But interestingly enough, I saw all of the new models that they're gonna be coming out with and that actually dissuaded me from buying Dominion. When I saw this preview video of the various new models that are gonna come out, um, I knew that I wouldn't be able to resist the temptation to buy a lot of these expansions because these models look so cool. And you might be thinking, hey bum, you know, you're a hobbyist. Um, why would having really cool models dissuade you since that was actually a pro for buying the set? And the reason is, again, because of money. I, knew, I know that these small expansion boxes are not as good of a deal as the starter box and I knew that I would be tempted to buy these models as well to fill out my Cruel Boys uh, army. Even though it might not have any strategic value, I would just buy it because I would want the models. And right away I realized it isn't just the $200 to buy Dominion, I would actually probably put more money in, in buying these models as well. Not only the addition of these Cruel Boys, but also the Stormcast Eternal started looking really attractive to me in terms of the expansions that they're gonna be coming out with. And I realized, wow, I would get invested in both of the armies and would want to expand them. And that was a huge money and time sink that I wasn't really uh, wanting to put that much into that. So that's one of the reasons why I decided not to go this direction. And the second primary reason and change that has happened since I originally posted this video is that Kill Team 2 was announced and the release of a revamped rule set, more simplified, and I had a chance to look at some of the preview videos of how the rules are being changed, and I am super impressed with the changes that are coming out for Kill Team version 2. And because I already have a ton of factions from the original Kill Team, which I slowly transitioned out of because the rule set was driving me crazy, I still have all of those models. And this is a way for me to jump back into Kill Team because if they made it simplified and fast and furious uh, like they did with Warcry, then I am totally interested because there are two rule sets from Games Workshop that I actually enjoy. That is Space Hulk and Warcry. Those are, I feel like, are streamlined, are really fun to play, and are is, is more casual. And the fact that these Kill Team revisions, these rules that are coming out, is uh, really revamps the game uh, entirely, which was what I would need in order to get back into Kill Team. Uh, that looks really promising, and so the sudden announcement of Kill Team 2 right after Dominion released made me forget all about getting spending my $200 to buy Dominion, and instead I'm going to be buying the new Kill Team box once that comes out, most likely in August, the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I know Games Workshop is still crazy, and so I still f have mixed feelings about um, giving my money, even $200, to the Kill Team starter box set. But since I already have a ton of factions for the original Kill Team that I can now use for Kill Team 2, uh, I feel like less is going to be invested in there anyway after the starter box is purchased. And I'll definitely be doing a how to play and review video for Kill Team 2 once that is out. And there might be a possibility that Kill Team, that box set might be a GGGG for August, depending on the timing and everything. But I did want to thank everyone who did comment. Uh, I did really enjoy everything that you did say. It was interesting that probably most of my subscribers are more into indie games and independent games and my channel is going to continue to focus on that even if I do stray into talking about Games Workshop stuff. My primary focus is going to be more on independent publishers so don't worry about that. Also, as I mentioned before, I will be coming out pretty soon once I'm done painting up my Seraphon army about a review of alternative miniatures, primarily one-page rules miniatures, and how that stacks up to Games Workshop miniatures. But a quick preview, as you can see here, this guy is awesome. And so I think actually 3D printing an army is viable. So make sure you subscribe because that video should be coming out relatively soon, as well as a how to play video for Age of Fantasy, which is again, one-page rules mass fantasy battle set. This video was relatively short, just wanted to follow up. 
Thanks again to everyone who did contribute. And again, check out my Patreon link if you want to get in on the gratitude gifts for this month. Otherwise, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.